Hello and thanks for tuning in to GoVirtual.tv. My name is Greg Perry and the topic of discussion for this informational video is the installation and configuration process used for VMware vSphere version 4.0 ESXi installable edition. First place to get started is this link on the right hand side at the VMware.com website which is the VMware ESXi homepage. There's two versions of ESXi. There's a fully licensed version of ESXi that costs about the same as ESX. There's also a free version. The difference between the two is that the higher order functions of vCenter, such as the DRS load balancer or the HA high availability module, VMware vMotion live migration, as well as management by vCenter, is not available through the ESXi free edition. Other than that, it's a full blown bare metal hypervisor with all of the bells and whistles associated with ESX or ESXi including VMFS support, fiber channel, iSCSI and NFS storage support, resource management, the ability to run multiple VMs and hit high consolidation ratios on a single host hardware platform, all of the benefits of standard ESX. Once again, the only difference between the free version and the fully licensed version is the ability to manage ESXi with vCenter, including the higher order functions that come with vCenter. So if you have vCenter and you want to be able to view motion and migrate and use DRS as well as HA, for example, you would go for the fully licensed version of ESXi. If you download the free version, it's a standalone bare metal, what's referred to as thin hypervisor which in previous versions is a 32 megabyte footprint. I don't know what the most recent version of 4.0 is because it's so new, but it's a thin hypervisor with a much reduced attack surface, meaning that there's no underlying service console or Linux based component to the equation. And we see as a result of that, the administrative infrastructure required to support and to maintain the ESXi hypervisor is greatly reduced when compared with a traditional ESX host that has that Linux based service console. Now getting started at the home page for VMware ESXi 4, we see that right here is where we could register for a free download. Installable version of ESXi and the free version are both one and of the same. It's the exact same image. The only difference is the type of license that we put into it. It's about a 300 megabyte image that we would download. It's distributed in the form of an ISO image. We take that ISO image, we burn it onto a CD, we boot the host from that CD, and we're good to go for the installation process from that point forward. Prior to the installation, we always would want to go to the resources button here and select compatibility guides and navigate to the view VMware certified hardware compatibility guides to take a look at the systems HCL and what the systems HCL is is a list of the different flavors of the hypervisors which are developed and sold by VMware and we see for ESXi 4.0 installable what we would do is we would then plug in some information about that particular hypervisor for example in this instance PowerEdge because we'll be doing an installation onto a Dell PowerEdge server and searching the HCL. Now the results from that hardware compatibility list we see is a list of all of the different makes and models as well as processor configurations which are supported for ESX 4.0 also referred to as vSphere ESXi and the various makes and models and versions 1955 blades or 1950 generation 3 so on and so forth once again it's always a good idea and actually for a production environment a requirement to ensure that you inspect the VMware HCL to ensure that your system as well as any peripheral components such as IO devices as well as the storage fabric that we'll be using are fully supported for that production environment. Now I've already booted this Dell PowerEdge onto the installation media for ESXi installable version 4.0 and the very first splash screen that we're going to see here is the VMware VMVisor boot menu and it's going to prompt us for one of two options either the ESXi installer or to boot from a local disk if you don't select a default option the default option is the ESXi installer which kicks off after about 10 seconds and if we were to hit the tab key right here that would also show us any options that we could edit we're just going to go ahead and hit the enter key and begin the process of booting the VM kernel and associated installation process with VMware ESXi and after a few moments depending on the installation media the speed of the drive is, as well as whether it's a locally attached CD-ROM or if it's some type of virtual media anywhere from one to five minutes to initialize the entire installation now after the initialization process completes, we'll see the familiar gray and yellow screen associated with VMware ESXi and all of the various installation modules will get loaded up 
and we will be presented with the ability to install ESXi onto the local hard drive. In this instance, that's going to be onto the local 73 gig SAS drive inside the Dell PowerEdge 1950. Now the next screen we're presented with is the VMware ESXi 4.0 installer screen. There are three options available to us here. If we hit the escape key, it's going to cancel out of installation. If we hit the R key, that's going to present us with a repair console for a previously installed version that may not have completed properly. And finally, enter to install. We'll go ahead and hit enter. Here's the license agreement. Hit F11 to accept. And we're then presented with the drive that we want to install ESX onto, which in this instance is going to be the local 73 gig SAS again. And F11 to install will begin the installation process. Now after the installation is complete, we'll be presented with the following screen that vSphere ESXi 4.0 has been successfully installed. We would then want to remove the installation media from the disk or disconnect the DRAC or the ILO card. Enter to reboot. Server will then shut down and reboot and in a few moments we'll be presented with the console that we can then log into which is the, actually the VM kernel including the management network. Now after the installation process is complete and we've rebooted the machine we'll then be presented with the loading VMware hypervisor prompt. Once again the gray and yellow screen that's indicative of the ESXi and the VM kernel. And another thing to mention now with vSphere 4.0, even the ESX service console, we see this process of the VM kernel being initialized with that telltale gray and yellow indicator that it's the VM kernel that's being initialized. Now the first step for our post-installation configuration is going to be to hit the F2 key to customize the system. First thing we want to set is going to be the configure the root password option enter on configure password to set the root password for the host enter after we've confirmed it next step would be to configure the management network which right now currently does not have an IP address and one cool thing that we can do with the network adapters option is we can actually establish a NIC team directly right here from the console itself which provides a layer of redundancy to our VM kernel management network so we'll go ahead and select both VMNIC 0 and VMNIC 1 which are the first and second onboard NICs respectively on the motherboard of the 1950 itself enter for OK VLAN if we wanted to configure one we're not actually using one for the management network for this particular video now our IP configuration, enter, it's currently set to dynamic IP address but doesn't yet have an IP assigned to it, it hasn't gone out and got a lease. We're going to establish static IP address and replace this IP address with 10.100.0.9 and a slash 24 subnet with the default gateway of 10 to 100 0 0.254 enter to commit those changes DNS configuration and for our DNS server we'll establish a primary as well as our secondary and a really important option the fully qualified host name the reason why the fully qualified host name is so important is because for higher order functions of vCenter for example high availability HA is actually delegated and coordinated peer-to-peer -peer in an ad hoc P2P framework which is used to recover virtual machines if they fail and is used to locate the hosts which are authoritative for a HA cluster and it's the first five hosts which are added to an HA cluster which become authoritative for the HA cluster and coordinate restart options for VMs and for entire hosts that have failed. If we don't have a fully qualified host name as well as at least a forward record established with our 
primary and hopefully secondary DNS servers, that's going to cause significant issues and potentially won't allow us to deploy an HA agent in the event we ever want to run any type of VMware HA clustering. Enter to continue. Last but not least, custom DNS suffixes. And after all of our changes have been committed, if we hit the escape key one time, that's going to prompt us to apply the changes and to restart the management network. Remember, once again, for VMware ESXi, they have deprecated the use of the service console. So unlike VMware ESX host, where we have to have not only a service console IP address, but a VM kernel IP address as well, in the world of ESXi, there's one single IP address which is used for both the VM kernel as well as the management network. Why to apply changes? And escape, and now we see that we could then point our web browser directly at this host to download the vSphere client. And by pointing our web browser using a secure connection to the fully qualified host name of the ESXi host, we now see the web access, which additionally gives us the option to download and install the vSphere client, which we can use for any additional post configuration options that we may need. Now I already have the vSphere client installed on this host so I'm not going to remove it and reinstall. So I'll go ahead and cancel out of this. But assuming that we have the vSphere client now loaded, log in using the newly assigned root password that we just set. Check this box to use our existing Windows session credentials if we want and select the login button. It's going to prompt us to install the certificate and not display any further warnings, which we're going to do. After which the new vSphere inventory panel will be displayed, which is quite a bit different than what you're probably accustomed to using the older VMware infrastructure client. We see here we have an evaluation license. After this step here, we could either install our own license, use the host in 60-day evaluation mode, or use the free license that we downloaded from VMware for the licensing process. Okay, and that's pretty much a wrap. For more videos of this nature, please visit GoVirtual.tv. Hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Until next time.